let us go ahead and worship the Almighty God. Lift our hands to Him. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Bless the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Bless the ancient of days. He's worthy to be praised. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Praise Him. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Jesus is Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Jesus is Alpha. Alpha and Omega, so I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha and Omega, so I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha and Omega, Jesus. and the ending the one who was the one who is the one who is to come the almighty God the unchangeable changer the husband of the church the father of the fatherless 
the husband of the widow, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the I am that I am, the maker of heaven and the earth. Glory be to your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done for us since the last convention. Thank you for what you're about to do during this convention. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in a very, very special way, let heaven come down to earth. And let every one of us here be a partaker of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and say, Welcome, God bless you. And then you may please be seated. I'm sure you will be asking yourself, or you ask yourself at one time or the other, why do we come to conventions? What's the idea? What's the purpose? Well, among many other things, I would love to enlighten you by saying reason number one why we come together every year for annual convention is so that we can praise God together. You see, when we have corporate praise, we get corporate miracles. We get miracles beyond the normal. According to Psalm 67, from verse 5 to 7, Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, when all the people praise God, then God will bless us to such an extent that the whole world will become afraid. So when you are looking for fearful miracles, you come to the convention. The hallelujah of one fellow, no matter how loud he can shout, has a limit. But when we all shout together, Even the devil has to flee. Reason number two why we come to conventions is to fellowship together. And fellowshipping together in a massive way like can happen during the convention will lead to certain things According to Psalm 133, from verse 1 to 3, Psalm 133, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible tells us that when brethren gather together in unity, God commands a blessing. In other words, God will say to blessings, I command you, descend upon these people. As we fellowship together, blessings have no choice. They have to obey God. And so I can decree straight away because we have come 
to this year's convention in the name of the one that had brought us together I command you shall be blessed Number three reason why we come together for conventions Because I believe some of us must have been asking the questions Where are all the preparations? Where are all the money spent? Where are all the efforts? Why don't you make convention something we do once in four years? Number three, why we come together for conventions is that we can pray prayers of agreement. And according to Matthew chapter 18 from verse 19 to 20, Matthew 18, 19 to 20, the Almighty God says, even if it's only two of us that are gathered together, He only added all. If two or three of us gather together, he said it will be in our midst. And that whatever we ask will be granted to us. For just two minutes, I want you to hold the hand of the fellow next to you and pray. And say, in the name of Jesus, I agree with you you will get your miracles. Go ahead, just for two minutes. I'm in total agreement with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that during this convention, you will get your miracles. Oh yes, I'm in agreement with you and I know God is here with us. During this convention, you will get your miracles. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And then, reason number four is that we are fellow pilgrims. We are traveling together to heaven. And we come together so that we can encourage one another on the way is to say brother don't relax we will make it very soon sister don't look back heaven is our home according to Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 23 to 25 Hebrews 10 23 to 25 we gather together so that we can remain one to the other and encouragement to say hey we will make it God who promised us is faithful and I want you with all boldness to tell your neighbor whether the devil likes it or not you will make it to heaven Tell your neighbor whether the devil likes it or not, you will make it to heaven. So, you see, the convention is not an outreach, or a little bit of it will be an outreach, like on Friday when. The door will be open to Dick and Harry. Or like 
by the grace of God now, through the Dove Media, the whole world is watching. Those who are not Christians can watch. But basically, the convention is an enrich. It's a gathering of those who are already on the way. It's a gathering where we teach deep things. We remind ourselves some of the things we have learned in the past. We encourage one another. We are revived. We are strengthened within. So that in a real convention, most of the teachings will be deep things, basic things we need to know about this journey to heaven. And I'm extremely grateful to God that he had asked us to discuss heaven itself this year. Because after all the years, it looks as if some Christians have forgotten all about heaven. Attention has been shifted. Attention has been shifted from heaven to things of the earth. And the world will pass away. Sooner or later, we will leave this world. There were people who were here with us last year who had gone to rest now. In an attempt to teach the whole counsel of God, attention had been focused more and more on things of the earth. Five ways to break through. Seven ways to prosperity. Etc. etc. It's not that these things are bad. It's that, that they are secondary. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things will be added unto you. And so during this convention, by the grace of God, we will be teaching on things that are of heaven. Less than the things of the earth. So I hope you will pray and say, Lord, teach me things of heaven. Remind me of things of heaven that I've learned and forgotten. Because some of the things we'll be saying, they won't be news to some of you. But if you ask yourself, when was the last time you thought about these things? I can assure you there is a God in heaven and is the all-sufficient God. He has the ability to heal. And oh, I can assure you, he will heal during this convention. He has the ability to deliver. He will deliver during this convention. He has the ability to prosper. 
and you will prosper during this convention. But I'm sure you know, even if somebody is raised from the dead, sooner or later, he will still die. Otherwise, Lazarus will still be alive today. There are certain things that are good, but they are temporal. There are things that last forever. And so we must refocus on these things that last forever. I've told the Almighty God, since it has pleased Him to keep me alive to see this week, I will tell you the truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. It will be up to you to receive them. It will be up to you to reject them. But I would have done my best. And I want you to know that the devil knows very, very well that there will be tremendous transformations in the life of many of us. That's why he made all preparations for this particular week to make sure that you won't be able to come. That you are here. The devil has failed. I will see you in heaven. Don't you believe? And when I say I see your amen should have been louder. And tonight, we are starting on as pure as light, as pure as light. James chapter 1, verse 17, James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In the name that's above every other name, during this convention, your testimony will be perfect. We have a Father. He's in heaven. Jesus said so when he was teaching the disciples to pray. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven. And this Father is called the Father of lights. According to the text I've just read to you. And it's not just the Father of lights. Of course, if he's the Father of lights, he himself must be light. He said, this perfect light. There's no shadow in him. Perfect light. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 9 verse 5, John 9 verse 5, he said, I am the light of the world. He went on to say in John 14, verse 30, John 14, verse 30, he said, The prince of this world 
cometh unto me and has nothing in me. Perfect, pure light. And then in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Matthew 5, 14, Jesus turned to his disciples. And I believe you are one of his disciples. He said, you are the light of the world. And then he said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, Ephesians 5, 27, he said, those of us who are his bride, those of us that Jesus is coming back for, must be without spot, without wrinkle, without any form of blemish. Listen to me very well, children of the living God. Your father is perfect. He's perfect in his works. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. Is perfect in all his ways. Second Samuel 22 verse 31. Second Samuel 22 verse 31. His ways are perfect. Is perfect in his laws. Psalm 19 verse 7. Psalm 19 verse 7. The laws of our father. Perfect. When he heals, he heals perfectly. Second King chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 14. When he healed Naaman, there were no scars left. When he delivers, he delivers perfectly. Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20. Mark 5, 2 to 20. When he healed, when he delivered the madman of Gadara, there was not a single demon left in him. When he loves, he loves perfectly. John chapter 15 verse 13. John 15 verse 13. He said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. When he shows mercy, he does so perfectly. Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. Mark 1, 40 to 42. A leper came to him, begging for cleanliness, cleanliness, healing. All he had to do was say, be clean. And the man would have been cleaned. But his compassion pushed him to break even his own law that says you, won't, you should not touch a leper. He touched him. That's why I have good news for those of you who are here during this convention. When he heals you, he will heal you perfectly. When he sets you free, he will set you free indeed. In whatever areas he chooses to provide for you, you won't lack again. And for those of us who are crying to him for mercy, he will show us perfect mercy. But now, 
he expects we his children to be like him like father like children he does not expect half measures from us people have turned Christianity to a joke there are even some preachers who preach now that you can be born again and continue in adultery there's a preacher who said don't worry yourself once you're born again continue with your sin but just keep on listening to someone the devil is a liar when you become a Christian you must become a Christian perfectly God your father has no room for half measures In Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, Revelation 3, 15 and 16, he said, if you want to be cold, be cold. If you want to be hot, you must be born in hot. He has no room for lukewarmness. Whatever you do for him, you must do it perfectly. When you worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. So from now on, your attitude to worshiping God must change. When I was coming here last night, I saw the young ones worshiping God the way he wants to be worshipped. With total abandon. With complete consecration. They were worshiping God the way David did. dancing so much that even his belly was coming out of his uh, robes. That's the way God wants to be worshipped. He wants you to worship him wholeheartedly. Do you know when God asks you to clap for him? Thank you. Thank you. When he says you should clap for him, he wasn't talking to just somebody. He was talking to everybody. In Psalm 47 verse 1. And like Bible scholars told us, if only you know the meaning of what he asks you to do, they won't beg you. Because according to Bible scholars, what he asks you to do, just hold on, just hold on, is that you are to put all your problems between your two hands and jam the hand together. Thank you.
I, I don't have the time to go to details on clapping. But you know, when he says, clap your hands, he's also saying, give me an indication that from now on, you will cooperate with me. Thank you. This thing might appear to you as minor things. To God it is not. He expects everything you do to be done perfectly. Years ago, In Otupo, I went there to preach to some young, young students. And we were praising God. And one of the products of that meeting was my beloved son, Paul Eneche. We were praising God. I was going to preach on divine healing. But these students, for God, I mean, well, they don't care who's looking. They were praising God. They were clapping in the real sense of clapping and me. All of a sudden, that's all right. God bless you. I give you an opportunity to clap. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came down. And all of a sudden, you find two or three students speaking in tongues. No, I've not taught on Holy Spirit baptism. And while the others were watching, the power fell on them. They turned to the right. The Holy Spirit was falling. Turned to the left. The, I forgot my psalm. When you deal, God, deal with God the way He expects you to deal with Him, there'll be no need for preaching. The Almighty God will do what He alone can do. Now put your hands together and clap for the Almighty God. Thank you. When you read Revelation chapter 19, from verse 5 to 6, Revelation 19, 5 to 6, you will discover that when God asks you to shout, it is... Thank you. The kind of shouting he expects is to be like thunder. An American preacher came to visit us when we were in the very first auditorium by the roadside. And if I remember correctly, he said, I don't think I can come back. 
I said, why not, sir? He said, your shout of hallelujah frightens me. Many a times we don't know what we miss when we approach God lukewarmly. We don't know what we miss. If we approach Him perfectly, we get things we can't even dream possible. But some people here, at least on the altar here, who will remember very well the case of a woman. And whatever she ate, she vomited. Very worthy woman. They took all the x-ray, there was nothing wrong. Nothing they could see on the x-ray. She went all over the world, no cure. And she came to a Buddha matter. All we said was let somebody shout hallelujah. And there's the hallelujah of those who are comfortable. It's always different from the hallelujah of those who are desperate. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, don't worry. I, I, I will give you an opportunity just once more. As she opened her mouth to shout, right there in the church, out of her mouth came a big worm. A demon that the enemy had put in her kind of demon that won't appear on x-ray and that was the end of her problem do you know that even tonight you can get all your problems to be over Amen. My daddy asked me to tell you, you will testify of tonight. So when, when you claim to be a child of God, 
you are supposed to be as pure as light. Your brand of Christianity, our brand of Christianity, must be the one that has no room for anything called sin. Others may tell you that your own is too much. That your standard is too high. Tell them as I used to tell them. It's not my standard. It's the standard of my father. My father who art in heaven. What my father in heaven says in Second Timothy chapter two verse nineteen. Second Timothy chapter two verse nineteen he say he said God knows those who are his own. And anyone naming the name of Jesus Christ must depart from iniquity completely, totally. People will tell you, so called Christians. That there are certain things God will understand. That there are certain things not too bad. He knows you are in the flesh. Hmm. You know the problem with not too bad? It is that it is already bad. Ah, thank you. I mean, let me just take one example. They will tell you there's nothing wrong with just a little bit of wine as long as you don't get drunk. I've had that one from big, big men of God. Nothing wrong, nothing true, I mean, it's not too bad, just a little bit. When you read Genesis chapter nine, from verse 19 to 27, Genesis nine, from verse 19 to 27, the Bible tells us what happened to Noah. That man who got such a tremendous deliverance from God. Whose family was the only one rescued from the old world. Began to be a husband man. And he began to drink just a little bit of wine. Just a little bit. But one day a little bit will become a little too much. And he got drunk. Noah. Oh, yes. By the time he woke up and he heard what had happened, he pronounced a curse on one of his three children. No. Take Lot. 
as another great fellow rescued by the almighty God and she eat to usually drank just a little bit of wine not much never got drunk before but you read Genesis chapter 19 from verse 29 to 38 Genesis 19 29 to 38 his daughters two daughters got him drunk one night after the other and slept with their fathers the result that great man Lord produced Moab and Ammon through his daughters and when you read Deuteronomy 23 verse 3 Deuteronomy 23 verse 3 the almighty God said no Ammon, Ammonite no Moabite shall ever come into my congregation Lord because of a little drink at a time destroyed his legacy forever oh <laughs> daddy you know I don't drink wine <laughs> daddy I don't have a... well I may get angry once in a while That's the only little problem. I mean, but uh, you know, it's uh, unless somebody calls it. Hmm. A little weakness, unattended to, will be what the devil will use. I say joker card particularly when you are closest to heaven I'm going to stop there tonight we pick it up from there tomorrow Major daddy how can anyone how can anyone Be as, be as pure as light oh. the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins and if you are willing to cooperate with him according to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 Galatians 5 verse 16 cooperate with the Holy Spirit you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh how perfectly does God want you to be I will remind you of two little stories quickly and then I release you to go and pray Because it has pleased the Almighty God to make me your fathers. And I want all my children in heaven. And I will see you there. You see, you can if you are a true Christian, if you are a genuine Christian. You won't tell a white lie. To you, all lies will be lies. 
told you the story. Some of you are old. I'm reminding you so that you get back. Let's get back to the old ways. Heaven is near. I traveled to Elisha, came back to Lagos. I was living in Surulere. And I decided to go and greet my father in the Lord. On the way I remembered, oh, I can't go to my father in the Lord empty handed. And so I, I saw some oranges by the wayside in Surulere. I bought the oranges, took it to him. He knew I've just returned from Elisha. As soon as I got there, he got the oranges peeled. And as he was sucking the first one, fortunately it was sweet. He turned to me and said, ah, this orange is sweet. You bought it on the way? I said, yes, sir. The Holy Spirit grabbed me immediately. You understand the question. The question was, you bought it on the way from Elisha. And so I began to argue with the Holy Spirit. I said, hey, so what? Whether the, on the way from Elisha or the way from Surulere, it's already sucking the orange, it's enjoying it. The Spirit of God said, tell him the truth. And when the Spirit won't let me rest, and I pray for every one of you, from now on, any time you are getting involved in anything contrary to the will of God, the Holy Spirit won't let you rest. So I turned to Papa. I said, Papa, he said, yes, my son. You asked me where I bought the oil. He said, yes. I said, I didn't buy it on the way from Malaysia. I bought it on the way from Surulere. The old man smiled. I said, hmm, Holy Spirit. He knew who was dealing with me. To you, that kind of lie doesn't matter. It matters to God. Express you to be as pure as light. He expects every word you speak to be the truth. I remind you of another story that some of you know. I was said I was at the University of Lagos. And because of my position, uh, letter-headed papers and letter-headed envelopes uh, uh, on my table. So I wrote a letter to someone, personal letter. And I stretched my hand to take one of the envelopes. And the Spirit of God said to me, that envelope is for official letters, not for personal letters. When my hand froze, and then I began to argue with God. Uh -uh. Oh, it's in an envelope. How much do they sell one? And God spoke to me and said, when, when you know it is that cheap, go and buy yours. I 
Many of you want that kind of relationship with God. You want to walk with Him in absolute holiness, absolute purity. You are going to pray tonight and ask God to help you. Because you must be as pure as light. And for your information, I wrote a book on that topic, As Pure as Light, several years ago, more than 30 years ago. You might find it at the CMA, uh, CRM bookshop. But there have been some of us who have not even been born again. Uh, who claim to be born again and we are so living our life as we life. Ah. What the Bible says is if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are supposed to be passed away. All things are supposed to become new. Who is deceiving who? If the trumpet should sound tonight and Jesus should return, it's coming only for Christians who are without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. So if you are not yet born again or you've been pretending that you really, really mean business, if you want the kind of salvation that he gave to me that won't allow me to rest when I do something that I consider not too bad, you better come tonight. Come to the altar and come and cry to the Almighty God for the salvation of your soul. I'm not going to be counting from 1 to 10 tonight. If you want to come, you come. If you don't want to come, that's your own headache. In the meantime, the rest of us who are sure of our salvation, it's just that we never knew that we have to be as pure as light. Maybe we should stand on our feet and begin to cry unto the Almighty God. I said, Lord, I'm willing. I would love to be as pure as light. But you have to help me. Please help me tonight. So, those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, you can begin to come. The rest of us, maybe you want to go to the Almighty God and tell him the truth. I want to be as pure as light. I know it is possible. I know you can do it for me. Please, Lord God, I come to you tonight. Begin that work in my life so I can become as pure as light. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus Christ, begin to come now as, and pray to him as you come. I say, I want, I want the real salvation. I want that kind of salvation that will make me a brand new creature so that all things will pass away and everything will become new in my life. Hurry up now and come and cry unto the Lord. I will pray for you in about five minutes time. So make sure you are already in front if you are giving your life to Jesus Christ for the first time or you want genuine salvation. Come and begin to cry unto him for salvation. Go ahead, talk to him. Don't wait for anybody. Tonight is a personal situation between you and the Almighty God. Cry unto him. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I've come to you. Have mercy on me. Save my soul. Give me the genuine salvation, the kind of salvation, Lord God Almighty, that I will never again do anything that will annoy you. Go ahead. Begin to talk to God. In about five minutes, I will come and pray for you. If you are on the way, hurry up. So you'll be here before the five minutes. The rest of us, 
to you. Talk to God. Tell him, I, I, I want to be as pure as light. In all my ways, I want to be as pure as light. Help me, O oh Lord. Have mercy on me.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to bless your name. I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for this, your children who have come forward, asking you for genuine salvation. Father, please grant their request. Let your blood wash away all their sins. Save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become genuine children of God. Yeah. From now on, my Father and my God, let them do your will perfectly. Yeah. When they call on you, Father, answer them by fire. Yeah. Thank you, my Father. And I'm committing all your children who are here tonight into your hands. Young and old, the grace from now on to be as pure as light, please release unto us. The grace never to steal, never to lie, never to be corrupt in any way. Father, release unto us. The grace to be children of God indeed. In secret and in the open. The grace to be the children of God when nobody is watching. Father, release unto us in Jesus' name. And the grace to serve you perfectly, to worship you perfectly, to do everything you want us to do perfectly. Father, release unto us in Jesus' name. I know your children will still be talking to you even as they go to settle down in their hostels. Please, Lord. By the time the sun rises tomorrow, let all of us become brand new Christians. And if we return before tomorrow, please don't leave us behind. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Uh, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> you belong to Jesus now, your hallelujah should be different. Shout hallelujah. The counselors will attend to you, and I promise you by the grace of God I'll be praying for you. Well, the rest of us, maybe we can show God that we really begin a new life in him by worshiping him the way he should be worshipped just for two minutes will you stand on your feet and worship God with all your heart praise him sing unto him clap unto him shout unto him to, in, in, in a way that we show him that things are different now just for two minutes Go ahead.
Thank you, Jesus.